Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Welcome everybody. Today I have an extra special guest. She's extra special because she is my very own fractional CMO. Jennifer Tamborski is the CEO of Virtual Marketing Experts. And as a digital marketing strategist and coach, she specializes in working with coaches to embrace their identity online through digital marketing, helping them to grow their business to the next level. And I can personally tell you, uh, if you've gotten to know me by listening to my podcast for a while, or maybe looking watching the podcast on YouTube, you know I'm quite a character. And Jennifer has definitely helped me, and I am a business coach and trainer for virtual experts, so I am a coach, and she's helped me embrace that identity through the digital marketing, and um, I'll talk a little bit more about all of those things as we go, but this is about Jennifer, not about me, so Jennifer, welcome. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I love talking to you anytime, but oh. being on your podcast is super special. <laughs> Well, I'm so excited to have you on here today because I know that you have a wealth of information that can help listeners, no matter where they're at in their business, whether they're just brand new and thinking about doing this, or whether they've been in business for 10 years and are doing a couple of million a year and want to go to a couple more, add a couple of more million on. I know that you, that everybody's going to gain something from you today. Thanks. I, yeah. you know, one of my favorite things to talk to you about is because you compliment me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's easy to, because you, um, so one of the things I want to mention right away, but from you saying that is when I first met you, I mean, it, Anybody, as soon as people start listening to you today, they're going to go, oh my God, she is like a total genius and she's nice and fun and she's a great mom because we're going to talk about that too. You have kids, you have a great marriage and uh, others are going to listen to you and go, she's got it all. She can do everything. She's amazing. And when I first met you, I don't think you thought that about yourself. No, absolutely not. There's been a whole lot of growth going on between when we first met and now. That is for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so tell I us mean, a little bit about your family and about how, you know, where you went in your life and how you started your business originally. Yeah. So I started, I graduated college, which, so full disclosure, I have a biology degree. I don't have a marketing degree. I have a biology degree. And after college, I went and worked and I couldn't find something in my field. So I ended up in the administrative field because that's what I did through college. That's what paid for me to go to college was working as, as an admin. And then I had kids. My first kid, it was awesome. We put her in daycare, no problem. My second kid, we look at daycare costs and went, oh yeah, that's not gonna work my entire paycheck would have gone to paying for daycare. That's how I ended up entering into the virtual world, right? At the time, um, real estate was great at the time, much like it is right now. We were in a, a buyer's market, a seller's market. I actually don't remember which type, but anyway, <laughs> it, was, it was busy. And so I had a lot of real estate agents that needed help. And so that's what I focused on at that time. Um, and then in 2008-ish, the real estate market collapsed, at which point you have to look and go, oh my God, what do I do now? Um, and I started, ended up working for marketers as a virtual assistant during that time. My personal perspective, looking back, those marketers understood the internet and understood where it was going. And so working um, as with a virtual assistant made sense to them. Um, so 
I had a lot of marketers on as, as clients. And so I learned a lot and I spent about, I don't know, six, seven, eight years doing that. Now, during this time, I never left my house. I'm going to tell you all right now, (laughs) I'm a serious introvert. And if I don't have to leave my house, I'm not going to. But there came a point when my kids were in school. I have three. They're amazing. But they, they're they all in school and I needed to do something else. My business was a hobby at the time that paid me, right? I didn't work it like a business. I didn't grow it like a business. I didn't pay attention to it like a business. I just made some money on the side. So I started networking and started getting massive amounts of clients coming to me. People were hiring me right, left, and center which was awesome, except they were hiring me because I was cheap. (laughs) Like, that's the truth. They were hiring me because I wasn't charging the the value that that I could provide. And so, um, and I had a lot of people, I was connected to a lot of coaches. At, don't worry about the dog barking we, we're going to have dog dogs we're, yes, my dogs are going to get ready to bark your dog we we all have you have two dogs right I have three dogs now actually three dogs yeah. wow yeah. and I have three dogs so we yeah. got six dogs between us um that could be barking uh, scratching time. the floor dropping their humongous just, bones just so. a heads up <laughs> yeah if you're if you're not watching this on youtube you go to YouTube and watch Jennifer mute herself and yell at her dog. <laughs> I'm <up>. trying. <laughs> it's quieter. <laughs> Actually, I was yelling at my son to come get my dog. <laughs> oh, okay. So now my dog starts barking. Can, can you hear my dog? <laughs> I actually can't hear your dog yet, but I've heard oh, them. Good. So yeah. Yay, yay, so, yay. Okay. Anyway. So you that, were, you were way undercharging. I was way undercharging. Your clients. And I looked at one of my friends who had just started as a coach and went, I need to hire a coach. And you know, what do I do? And so I went, I researched stuff. And so I started searching and I ended up finding a couple of different coaches. I wanted someone that focused on the virtual assistant world. Um, and I ended up finding a couple of them and your, the conversation I had with you helped me more in that one hour than anyone had in years. And so, um, so obviously oh, I thank hired you. <laughs> I did. It was awesome. <laughs> you provided me with more value in that one hour. Actually, I believe we talked for about an hour and a half hung up and then you called me back to give me more (laughs) because I was so excited about what you could offer and how quickly you could make money you want to share like the number one tip you got out of that call and what you did with that tip uh that I did not charge enough money so at the time I was charging about twenty dollars an hour um and your first suggestion was raise your rates to fifty five dollars an hour I'm gonna tell y'all I almost choked on that one Cause at the time I couldn't imagine someone paying me those rates in order to do that. Um, and I went back to my coach friend and went, Oh my goodness, this is what she's telling me. And she's like, if you're going to hire her, you do what she says, you do everything she says and you will be fine. And so I did very good advice for yes. anybody. If you hire a coach, you're paying, you need to be paying really good money to a really good coach and you need to be coachable and do what they say. Exactly. And Jennifer is very coachable. <laughs> so I did exactly that. I raised my rates immediately. Um, and, and what then happened? I still had clients coming in. They were still knocking on my door. There were some, um, there's this theory that like you raise your rates and it shakes the tree. Some people fall off, right? Some, and then more come in to fill it. And, and that happened, right? At this point right. in my career, I think I only have one client left from back before I focused on digital marketing. Um, mm-hmm. And she, <laughs> I love her dearly. And no matter how many times I shake the tree, she just keeps holding on. So <laughs> Aww, that's good. So, that's, she's a wise woman to keep exactly, holding on. Exactly. So, um, so yeah, that's what I did. And I still had clients coming in the door and um And I learned, the more we worked together, the more I learned the things that I actually loved to do, which was more marketing focused. 
rather than the admin stuff I was doing. I'm really good at a lot of things, but what I love is marketing and strategy and all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, so that's a really interesting topic that you bring up there, Jennifer, because you know, I'm, I'm always looking for my next Jennifer Tamborski uh, to come and blow me away because, you know, as you said, I was so excited. I called you back and I was like, here's a couple of other ideas. Um, and when I uh, find Jennifer Tamborski's, which I'm lucky enough to do a lot of times because that's what I'm looking for. Um, one of your biggest challenge that you just mentioned and others like you have the same challenge, which is you can do everything. Yeah. So it's really difficult for you to, ch to narrow down. Yes. So do you have any words of wisdom now that you have gone through that over the past several years and you have narrowed down? Do you have any words of wisdom for people who are struggling with the same thing? But you now why would I narrow down? I can do everything. So the, the biggest thing is, is when I narrowed down, when I chose to really hyper-focus on not only my niche, which is the marketing, but also a target market, people I can speak directly to, it allowed me to big, make a bigger impact. It allowed me to grow my business faster. And it really allowed me to have those people that I love working with, right? Like people like you that I enjoy getting on the phone with, that I enjoy doing things when they email me and they're like, can you do whatever? Yeah, because I like it. And has it made a difference in how much you're able to earn? Oh, yes. I mean, my business went from $55, well, from $20 an hour, then to $55. At this point, on average, I'm charging somewhere between 250-ish dollars an hour. Um, that's about what it averages out to. Um, my business went from making less than $20,000 a year. The first year I worked with you, I made more in that six months after we started working together than I had the entire previous year. So I went from making um, just over, just around 20,000, I think was that first six months of working with you to at this point, we're well over six figures and I have a plan and a goal to hit seven figures in the next 12 months. Woohoo! That's so exciting. So I'm sure there are people listening to this who are like, so how did you go from being a virtual assistant to being a digital marketer? So can it's you talk all, a little bit about that? Yeah, it's all about the experiences you have. You have a wealth of knowledge. Everyone does. If um, just by working with other people, you learn on the job, right? You get your hands in there. You learn all of the things. Um, whether you're a nurse that just came out of nursing school, when you go to the hospital, you're still learning on the job, right? There's all kinds of things that you learn. And so what ended up happening is I learned a lot from those marketers that I, I worked with. And then when I left them and we had that conversation that I need, I should focus on marketing because it's every time we talk about it, even I know I light up when I talk about marketing, right? So every time we talked about it, you would point that out. And I was like, but had all of those negative thoughts. I don't know enough, all of that kind of stuff. So I did what I did best. I researched and found out all of the information I could about marketing and about marketing in the digital world. I did take some extra courses so that I would be, you know, so I would have those things under my belt. Um, but I realized during that process that I knew 90% of what they were teaching me. And that's okay, right? I still learn more, but yeah. So anybody who's listening to this, you know, hear what Jennifer is saying, because this is that hidden secret that almost nobody knows about unless you've actually been in this industry already, which is you start out, it's it's super easy to start out as a virtual assistant, begin making money really quickly, and then develop those skills as you go, as you learn and grow with that. So it's not like you have to start out at the top or the bottom or the middle. You start out wherever you are right now and grow into whatever you want to grow into. Yeah. So and the reality Jennifer, is one, everybody has more in them than they think they do. Oh, 
Yeah. Talk about that for you. Cause that's actually where I was going to go next. Talk about <laughs> your mind, your mindset and how you have worked on that yeah. and how that's helped you change. So I started, I will say a couple of years ago, I started down a road with neuro linguistics programming NLP, which is the study and science behind how your brain works and how language influences your brain. Um, and I, I went into it originally for two things. One, I wanted to sell better, better. And the course that I was going to had a specific portion that was sales. And I'm like, that's all I need. I just need the sales. And what I learned was this really crosses over life and business and helps me in my marketing, in my business as, as a marketer, because I now know how to talk to everyone in a way they can hear and understand. Um, what that also did for me personally was shift my mindset on, on myself, on what I could do, on all of the opportunities that I had before me and allowed me to step into the leader that I am and be able to grow my company in a way that's, that's going to be amazing. Yeah. So it's never just about learning skills, which I think a lot of people focus way too much on. Don't you, Jennifer? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's never yeah. skills. I'm going to tell you right now, your business is never going to grow. If you just focus on skills, it's never skills. It's yeah. always my getting. Yeah. It's getting that experience. Yes. Yeah, so that you know what you're doing. And I would say that's actually the easy part. And then the difficult stuff is actually working on yourself and your mindset, yeah. which you have done. You have really, you, you have gone deep into all of that. And I think that's one of the big reasons why you've grown so quickly, why your business has soared yeah. so quickly. I really embraced that the knowledge that your mindset is what expands your business. It's, it is. Because if you have a, um, a poverty mindset, or if you have a lack mindset, or even if you don't think that you're capable mindset, that's what's going to hold you back. That's what's going to keep you from putting yourself out there, from being in front of people and from um, asking for payment for the job mm -hmm. you provided. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I know a lot of uh, VAs and, and I know even in my past, I have had clients not pay me for my services for whatever reason. And I, at the time, didn't have the mindset to force that issue, to, to make sure that that, that got paid. So, yeah. and the confidence you have gained really shows through and that confidence is part of what helps people uh, be attracted to you, to want to work with you. Because, you know, somebody comes across like, well, for example, you, Jennifer, you do Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the services that you provide to me is you run, you uh, create, manage, run, do everything for my Facebook ads. And um, if I had come to you and you're like, well, in fact, I did in the beginning, you were like, yeah, I kind of know Facebook ads, but I don't really know Facebook ads. And back then, now that I think about it, I didn't hire you then. I had somebody else I was working with and I didn't even think, well, now I should hire Jennifer because it seemed like you were still like a little unsure about it. And yeah. that didn't actually register with me. I didn't consciously think about that, but in hindsight, I can see that that was probably part of it. And then as I watched you grow into that and I worked with other companies, that were incredibly confident in what they could do, but actually didn't do that good of a job. Then I circled back around to Jennifer and I'm like, hey, Jennifer, want to do my Facebook ads? And she's like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and she's rocking it now. I'm telling you, she is rocking it. We are um, even, you know, anybody that works in Facebook ads or uses Facebook ads, you probably know they're not simple to use anymore. Um, <laughs> they never That's were so simple, true. but now, but they get harder and harder. Seems like daily. They change and things Jennifer, every day. <laughs> every day. And Jennifer stays on top of it and makes it work. 
So, yeah. and that's, I think that's one of the things you love is that challenge too. It is. I mean, I, I had, there was a point last year or last month, right before the election where Facebook was legitimately shutting down every Facebook ads account, just, just shutting everything automatically. down automatically. There was no rhyme or reason. And I'm in there, you know, talking to them about my client's account going, why do I do this? Like, for real? <laughs> <laughs> it's like beating your head against the wall yes. why am I beating my head against the wall <laughs> why am I doing this but after like that one frustration point I love what I do right I love making ads work I love looking at the the numbers and the analytics and really understanding what's working and what's not and coming up with ways to pivot and shift my clients ads so that they're they're always working and another thing I love about working with you is how proactive you are. So what you just said about looking at those numbers and coming up with ways to pivot and shift to bring in more leads for me at lower cost. I know that's what you do for all of your clients. Yeah. And I don't have to come to you and say, hey, uh, are, are we trying to save money here? Are we trying to bring in more leads at lower cost? You come to me and go, hey, I, I have an idea on how to do this, blah, 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 blah. And then I'm usually like, uh, could you explain that one more time? Cause I don't speak Facebook ads. <laughs> and then you, you, then you share it again in a, you know, the English. kindergarten level. Right. And then I get it. <laughs> you guys, I'm not technical at all. Um, and I, and then I go, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do it. And, um, she, you do that like every week every day I don't even know how often but I really appreciate it I'm always looking at ways to not only save my clients money I think one of the things that is the best about me is that I care about my clients businesses almost as much as they do um and so I'm yes. always looking for ways to make my clients more successful whether it's in their ads or their overall marketing strategy, or mm -hmm. sometimes it's in their sales, right? Sometimes my clients need, because I am a, a certified master coach and trainer of NLP, I have the ability to help them sometimes with their mindset. Sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. I had a client recently, we were talking and she's like, this person didn't have, you know, she didn't have money. And we started talking about that and what reality is, is that she had taught the coach that I was working with had talked herself into the fact that this person didn't have money. And so, um, that helps bringing that awareness sometimes can help my clients shift in their own ways. So I yeah. love being able to do that with people. Yeah. And, and so you're talking about all the different, um, amazing skills, capabilities, abilities that you have that you bring together uh, to create this amazing uh, CMO that you are. And as a fractional CMO, that means you work as an independent contractor with multiple people, which right. is awesome because then many of us can, can work with you and learn from you and have our businesses grow with your help. And we can do it at a cost that is less than hiring a full-time CFO, which is awesome. Right. But quite honestly, Jennifer, I mean, I know you have other clients because of course, as an independent contractor, you have to have other clients or you're not an independent contractor. Um, but I never feel like that I'm like just one of many. I feel like I'm your only one. And I don't know how you accomplish that, but I really love it. I, well, that's because I love my clients, right? I, my goal is to work with people that I enjoy working with so that I'm able to give them that relationship. If I don't enjoy working with you, if I think that, you know, when your email comes up or a call comes up or a Zoom call comes up and I'm like, uh, it's time for us to move, <laughs> on, right? It's time for us to separate yeah. because then yeah. I'm not giving you what you need as in In anything, in any kind of, I'm very conscious of if there comes a point with a client where I dread talking to them, it's time for us to, to move, move on. And you know what, that's a great tip for everyone. So let's just emphasize that for a minute. If you have hired an independent contractor on any level, whether it's a fractional CFO, CMO, or it's a admin, 
an executive assistant, a virtual expert, any anything, um, you know, copywriter, whatever it is, if you've hired somebody and you get emails from them or you have an upcoming meeting with them and you dread it, it's time to stop that relationship. And if you're that independent contractor yeah. working with a client and you dread hearing from that client, like Jennifer just described, it's time to end the relationship. Because, you know, yeah. Jennifer, you and I agree on this. We're here to, yes, make money. Yes, help other people, but to also enjoy what we do. That's just it. I love working every day. Like, I seriously love working every day. And one of my biggest struggles is to not work, right? To take time <laughs> off, um, to just pause that's one of my mm -hmm. biggest struggles because I love it so much. Um, I would work all the time and I also know that's not healthy. So taking time away allows my brain to reset and do all of those things that it needs to do to make me even better when I come back. So if you don't love what you do or you don't love who you're doing it for, it's time to either find something else. And if here's the thing, if you're a virtual assistant or an independent contractor of any kind and you've tried something and you didn't like it, guess what? It's okay to change. It's okay to make another decision and go, yeah, this didn't work for me. Because it's your business, you can do that at any time. Yeah, and as you've grown, you've found that you like different things. Right. You started with the admin. Yeah. You enjoyed that for a while. And then you're like, yeah, I'm kind of over that now. What's the next thing? And as a virtual assistant, you get to do that. Yeah, you don't absolutely. have to go to your I mean, boss the at a summer, corporation. <laughs> yeah. The first summer I was working with you as a coach, I think I changed my niche four times just in like a three month period. I was like, okay, I think I'm going to do that. Nope. Don't like that. <laughs> Yeah, which is and cool. I was you get willing, to do that. Yeah, I was willing to fail, right? Because there is no failure. There's only feedback. And so I was willing to try something. It didn't work. Great. I learned I didn't like that. Let me do something else. That's right. So one of the things that I know has been a struggle for you, and I want to talk about it because I know you can help others who are listening to this because they struggle with the same thing, is balancing, just like you talked about, you love your work, you could work all day long. So balancing work with family. So can you talk a yeah. little bit about the struggles you've had with that and how you've resolved that or, or continue so to work on it? Uh, it's, it's all, you know, something that I continue to work on all of the time, but a couple of things. Once one thing, there's no balance, right? You find a harmony that works because if you think about balance and you look at a scale, the only way to have balance is it for it to be perfect. And there just is no such thing as perfection. That's not going to happen. So if you're constantly seeking balance, you're always going to fail at it, which is going to then add all of those negative thoughts in your head about how this can't work, right? But if you look for harmony, if you look for a way to merge your life and your business so that you are happy doing both and you're setting aside time for both, you're going to be much happier when it comes to work and life. Um, when one of the reasons I started growing an actual business rather than being a solopreneur, having a team and building a team was when my daughter, she was, I think, 11 or 12, came to me and said, mom, can I schedule some time on your calendar? And to this day, that still makes me want to cry that she felt like she needed to schedule time in order to have my time. Um. So I started building and growing a team so that I would have more time in my life to, to do things with my kids, which was the whole reason I worked from home anyway, was so I could be there for my kids. Um, and what I have done is create structure in my business so that I am off when I'm off and I'm with my family when I'm with my family and I'm in business when I'm in business. Now, we're in December of 2020 at this moment we're still in COVID land. So that's also been a little like different because now my kids are home, virtual schooling. So 
they're never leaving the house either. Um, so there's, you know, different things that I've, I've adjusted and I've been able to do that. It is my business and I've been able to adjust my life so that my family and my life can kind of harmonize well with my business. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that because I know that's a struggle for many moms, wives, spouses. So thanks for sharing that. I appreciate it. So talk a little bit about, you mentioned having a team. Talk a little bit about what that's been like, any struggles you've had with that and how you've resolved those. Yeah. I started growing a team, like I said, a couple of years ago, and this was before I was working with you. And quite honestly, it was, again, one of the reasons I came to work with you was because I did everything wrong, right? Now, I don't know if y'all remember, but I said I was making $20 an hour. Of that $20 an hour, I was paying my team 15 of it. How was I ever going to make money doing that? Like for real, <laughs> you can't grow a business that way. Um, so you so were that, really making $5 an hour. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I was making five bucks an hour, um, which is even more ridiculous when you think about it. Um, so I when I shifted to $55 an hour, that allowed me to have an actual income, right? To actually produce a profit in my business. Um, I also hired a couple, I hired two people. I was acting as a project manager at that point, more than a business owner. And I don't know if you've ever read E-Myth Revisited, um, but that's a really good book to kind of explain how people go through a business, right? They start as the worker, they move to the manager, and then they move to a business owner, a CEO. And so I do the actual work while I manage the projects and the clients. And then I shifted again to become more of a CEO in my business. And so at this point, I am able to look at my overall business and see where it needs to go, what direction it needs to go in and have some vision about that and also my client's business. So I get to do the things that I love best in my business, which is that vision and that strategy and like seeing where we can take somebody else's business. Um, that's really like that fuels my fire. I love sitting down with clients and like really delving into that kind of stuff. And I get to allow my team to support me in that. So they get to focus on what it is they love and what it is they do best. Now, whether that's building websites or it's building funnels or it's working in Facebook ads, or it's like my project manager who legitimately just manages all of the people and, and the projects to keep things moving forward. Um, they all get to do what it is that they love to do. And I get to focus on what I love to do. And how many people are on your team and all, are they all virtual and were they virtual even before COVID? <laughs> yeah. So right now we have about five on our team. I, my team has fluctuated depending on what's going on anywhere between five and 10. Um, and so I have those other five as, as people I can pull in when I need to, they are all virtual. They are all contractors. So they all own their own businesses. Um, and we work really well with keep a, still being able to use their time in a way that makes our business work um, and them being having the time to grow their business in whatever way fits them. Yeah, so you just hit um, on one of the reasons why you and I know as business owners and as former VAs the huge benefit of working with virtual assistants and independent contractors, yeah. uh, which is you use them as needed, yes. right? They're not, they're not a fixed expense. Yes. They're on an as needed basis, which is yeah. awesome. <laughs> it really is. And it, it gives you a lot of flexibility because as my business has grown, I've grown up to 10, I think I had 10 or 12 teammates at one point. And we were still doing a lot of different things. At this point, we focus 
solely on sales funnels and ads, right? Driving traffic to those sales funnels. So that's our sole focus. So some of those people that were doing some of the other things as part of our business in the past aren't necessarily necessary right now. That doesn't mean that I can't use their skills in the future. And I have that ability to tap into them. But for now, I have a core people that that I, you know, my writer, my, my uh, people that do the websites and all of that kind of stuff, sales funnels. Um, I have those core people that focus just on what I need right now. And if I need more, I can bring in more. That's really exciting. Um, and Jennifer, can you talk a little bit more, and you've hit on this a couple of times, but I want you to go a little more in depth on exactly what a digital marketing strategist and coach does for your clients um, and how you like to work with people and who you, who you like to work with. I know yeah. I know you like to work with people you like, but- I you, do. You know. I love to work with people I like. <laughs> so I primarily work with two sets of clients, right? I work with that client that is just starting out in the coaching field. They're, they may not have a website. They definitely don't have a funnel. Um, they're, they've, if they've run ads, they've done it on their own unsuccessfully. Usually they're making somewhere 50 to 80 K ish. So they have a product they've sold that product and they're ready to go to the next level. They're ready to hit six figures. Um, those are some of the best clients that, you know, they're ready. They're really ready to invest their time, invest their money and be committed to doing what it takes to make their business hit six, seven, eight, whatever figures. Um, and then I have the other side are those clients that have already hit seven figures or are close to it, right? They're in that half a million to seven figure range. And they're looking to go to that next level. What's that next, that next thing that they can do to grow their business and scale. Now, what I do, we have, we have a couple of different things, but what I really do is work with them to develop strategies, right? Talking about their ideal client, helping them really understand who it is and how we can make something online work for them. Because a lot of people don't quite understand that there is a difference between selling online and selling in person. There's a different funnel needed. There's a different strategy needed. There's a different way to communicate with people that is needed. And so I provide that as a coach, I provide the consultation, the, the helping them walk through that. But as an actual digital marketing strategist, I develop the whole thing, right? I will dive into it. I develop the whole marketing strategy and then my team and I can execute it and take it and just run with it. Um, which provides them with the leads they need in order to close the sales in order to do that next thing. Um, and that's, that's really where we come in. We really help them to refine and define their marketing strategy. Oh, I love refine and define. That's good. <laughs> uh, and I can tell you as someone who's in that latter category that you mentioned, the, um, almost to 1 million revenue. Um, I, you know, I already had a sales funnel or two in place. I already was doing Facebook ads for many years, but everything wasn't running smoothly and I wasn't growing at the speed that I wanted to grow. So when Jennifer came on, she took a look at what was going on and she was like, oh, I see ways that we can, we can bring in more leads for less money. And then once you fixed some of that stuff, then we had that evergreen kind of stuff out there that's bringing in leads constantly. And now for 2021, we're working on a plan for a whole year. So that's where your strategy comes in too. Yeah. plan for a whole year so that we can really capitalize on everything as we go and have, um, uh, yes, those evergreen sales funnels working in the background, but new things that we're going to try, new um, events, new webinars, new training, new lead magnets, new whatever to see what'll work. Yeah, it really comes down to when you know your audience. So when you're at 
half a million to a million dollars. When you're in that upper range, you know your audience, you know what, what drives them, what makes them want to commit to you. But sometimes you're too close to the, to the business to see the opportunities to do something different, to do it in a different way, to twist, to do a, a twist or, or take a pivot. And that's really where I come in. I can look at your overall business and your overall strategy and go, okay, if we did this just a little different, if we just tweaked this a little bit, you'd get better results. Or sometimes you've had that evergreen running so freaking long <laughs> that it's noise, right? It's just people right. have seen the same thing over and over and over again for so long that they're not even paying attention to it anymore. So giving you the opportunity to do something completely new that your audience, because most people that are in that upper tier have an email list. You've been emailing your email list now for a bazillion years. You've got to give them something else that makes them want to take that next step. If they're on their email list and they're reading and they're not doing anything, there's a problem with what you're sending or what you're doing, right? You've got mm -hmm. them in there. Now we need to focus on doing something else that makes them buy. Right. And um, or maybe you were like, I was what a year ago, I think it was just a year ago where I had a list, but I wasn't nurturing them at all. So yeah, uh, I had too. to go back in and go, oh, I've been ignoring you for three years. Yeah. Let me stop ignoring you and let's put a system in place. So we also did that. Yes. Yeah. And then one more thing that I want to mention that you've helped me with, which is really exciting and she can help. Uh, and listeners like like me with is you you saw a different target market a similar but different target market that I had not marketed to at all mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and you came to me and said hey I've got this idea why don't we tap into this other market that needs exactly what you already offer but you're not marketing to them and I was like oh yeah that sounds yeah. like yeah and that's Again, it's sometimes when you're in your business, even my own business, that's why I hire coaches, right? That's why I have you and I have a secondary coach so that you guys can help me see things that I'm not seeing in my own business. It's the same for every business owner. You're in the trenches day in and day out. And sometimes you're not seeing the opportunities that are there, ways we can make your business better, make your finances better, make your your impact more and change more lives. Yeah. Which is what we all want to do. We all, we, we're, we want to make money. We want to be happy ourselves, but we also want to help others. And Jennifer, I, you've helped me tremendously personally, professionally on every level, because you guys, we, Jennifer and I have had the pleasure of, um, she's in my highest level mastermind and we do an annual retreat. And we have gone through a hurricane together. We have. It was actually kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> not something that I'm actually asking to repeat. So we're not. Oh, going yeah. <laughs> I think you might have said, boy, that was hurricane was fun. Do we want to do that again? <laughs> so we need to stay a little more inland. But yes, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Florida on the ocean in October was not a good idea. <laughs> It sounded like a fantastic idea at the time. And actually up until the day of the hurricane, it was awesome. That's right. That's right. And she also had the scary opportunity to uh, ride while I drove. Uh, we drove together because uh, Jennifer and I live about three hours away from each other. So I drove us to Florida from Missouri. And um, after that experience, she was like, yeah, I'm driving in the future. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I am happy to drive from here on out. <laughs> I'm a good coach, but I'm not the best driver in the world. <laughs> I'm easily distracted. She is easily distracted and also very friendly to everybody she meets. Just saying, <laughs> any random stranger. Uh, yes. So I do, I have that affliction that, you know, I'm one of those people in the grocery store line who will turn around and start talking to you, even though I don't know you. And Jennifer is not that kind of person. She's much more reserved. And I would turn, turn around to see where Jennifer was. And she's like the hiding behind something. So she's not, <laughs> so it doesn't I look like we're together. 
yeah, I'm not with that crazy lady. <laughs> but we have a lot of fun. We, we do. have a lot of fun. We do. Yeah. Which is and uh, we learn a lot. Yeah. And that's the yeah. whole point of, of business in general, right? If you can't have fun, mm-hmm. then what's mm-hmm. the point of doing it? Yeah. So Jennifer, um, unfortunately, our time together is coming to an end. So I know there are people out there going, oh, does she have any openings? Can mm-hmm. I possibly work with her? Because uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to take all of Jennifer's time that I can. So you'll be lucky to get some time with her. No, seriously. <laughs> she, uh, so somebody listening that wants to talk with you and find out if they're a good fit to work with you. What's the best way for them to learn more about you and get in touch with you? The easiest way is really to go to my website. It's virtualmarketingexpert.com. Um, and they can click on the discover call link and that'll take them to an application right, that they can fill out. And the whole point of all of this is really to make sure that we're both a good fit for each other. You're that we're going to work well together, because as I said, I want to work with people that I love and that I believe in what they do, right? Because every coach, I have this belief that coaches have the ability and the opportunity to change the world and doing this business. I get to have a hand in that. I get to help them change the world. So I get to make my own impact as well. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's the best way to, to contact me. So we will have that information, those links in our show notes. And before we end, I want to give a plug to my training and coaching company um, by talking about what else you do uh, for me and my business, virtualexperttraining.com. We have coaches who um, have already gone through my training program, graduated, have super successful businesses of their own. And Jennifer, I am so excited to tell you, is not only one of those coaches that you could possibly work with, she's actually the coach of one of our mastermind levels, which is called Sapphire Level. So Jennifer, could you talk a little bit about what it's like to coach virtual assistants and virtual experts? I love coaching virtual experts and virtual assistants. And I love the Sapphire group because I was there at one point, right? Like I was in that spot where um, my mindset didn't meet my goals. And that is what I help the people in the Sapphires really kind of work through. It's all about your mindset, meeting your goals and your ambitions. Um, As we talked about early in the, the show, mindset is critical when you're trying to grow a business. And so that's where, where we play. Yeah. And just so you know what, how I see things and I know Jennifer agrees with me on this, cause we've talked about it a lot is whatever level you're at right now, whether you're starting out, um, just beginning your VA business, or you're already a VA like Jennifer was and wanting to grow Um, It's never about the skills. It's never about the money, what it costs to do something. It's always about your mindset. And I know that doesn't sound sexy. I know you want it to be about skills because that's super easy to go get more skills training, but you're wasting your money. If you do that, you're wasting Mm -hmm. your time. If you do that first before getting your mindset shifted. And so as you go through my training program, then you have the opportunity to grow into working in the Sapphire mastermind with Jennifer and Jennifer, you implement, you use everything you've learned in your business and everything you've learned as an NLP. Say again, what you are, the high level of NLP. (laughs) I'm an NLP (laughs) master coach and trainer. And so, yes, I do. I learn. I use everything that I've learned to develop my own business, as well as specific techniques from NLP that help shift people's mindsets so that they can see their, their business and their life in a way that supports their goals. So I hope everyone has enjoyed this as much as I did and learned from Jennifer. Jennifer, thank you so much for being on here today. I really appreciate you sharing all of your knowledge. Thank you for having me. I had fun. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. 
say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm-hmm.